like to remind you what this program is about. This program is every it's aired every other Saturday, and uh, the last time we met, we focused on one of those um, entities, or I should say, departments that fall within the Ministry of the Presidency. It's not necessarily physically, but it functions, you know, based on guidance from the Ministry of the Presidency. And of course, the last time we met, we uh, dealt with the Gaming Authority, and the time before that, we dealt with the Institute of Applied Science and Technology. Today, it is my focus to be. It is my pleasure to be focusing on the Department of the Environment, and specifically the Protected Areas Commission. I have on our program with me Ms. Annalise Bainey. Annalise is the Head of Department of Public Communication and Outreach with the Protected Areas Commission. Welcome to Conversation from State. Thank you for having us. Oh, that's great. One of the things I always like to remind viewers on this program, Annalise, is that sometimes some of these um, departments or entities that are there to really and truly provide protection for us, we don't hear about them until something happens. For example, the Protected Areas Commission. We don't talk about the Protected Areas Commission um, every day or every week. Some people don't even know what it is about. So um, it is against that backdrop. I First of all, I'll ask, I'd ask you, even before you talk about the work of the Commission, what is a protected area? So a protected area is essentially um, an area or a space that's set aside because of Either it's um, intrinsic natural value, it's value to people, it's biodiversity, it's uniqueness as an ecosystem, mm -hmm. and it's set aside to be managed so that it can the resources that are contained in that system can be used sustainably. Okay, all right. Um, viewers, I should also let you know, uh, coming up a little later on, uh, we'll take a break from our conversation to show you to let you know exactly what are um, Guyana's protected areas and, of course, uh, the two-minute feature that we will show to you is voiced by none other than uh, the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, His Excellency Brigadier David Granger, who is very big on green and very big on uh, protecting our environment. So we'll be showing you that clip um, a little later on when we pause our conversation. Let's talk about the uh, Protected Areas Commission of itself now, Annalise. Um, what is the purpose of it? Well, the Protected Areas Commission was set up in 2012 through an Act of Parliament, okay. right? We actually have a Protected Areas Act that was passed in 2012. And essentially what the PAC does is we manage the national protected area system. So there are several protected areas in uh, different regions of Guyana. Mm -hmm. We actually have five protected are um, areas in okay. Guyana. Mm -hmm. And the Protected Areas Commission is the umbrella body that not only manages the hinterland protected areas like Kaichur, Shell Beach, Iwakrama, mm -hmm. um, Kanuku Mountains, Kanishen, but also the Botanical Gardens, National Park, Zoo, Jovera Park. So okay. we're in an umbrella body that manages all of those areas. All right. So if something happens in one of those areas that I may be either nearby resident or simply a concerned citizen and I'm not happy with it, um, can I uh, come to approach the commission for them to do something about it? Well, actually, we encourage people, we encourage dialogue with community members. And this not only um, holds true for community members in the hinterland, but community members in Georgetown. If you see something happening in the protected areas that you know should not be happening, you can always get in contact with us at the, our offices at the National Park. We have a presence on Facebook. You can email us. I mean, you can put the, um, the contact information after the end of the program, but mm -hmm. there are many ways of getting in contact with us. And we encourage people to let us know because we don't have that many bodies on the ground in the hinterland protected areas. So it's especially important for everyday Guyanese to take it on board because these are our protected areas. And if we don't look after them, then, you know, they're not going to be there for another 40 years. So we have to help to do that. Not to put you on the spot here, but again, and of course, this is functioning within the act. If a complaint is made, um, sanctions can possibly be brought against persons who may be violating our protected areas? Well, we try to work with all parties. We work a lot with our sister agencies like the Geology and Mines Commission or the Guyana Forestry Commission, as well as other partners like CI, WWF, and so on. Mm -hmm to try and come to an equitable resolution to all of the issues that may or may not be surrounding um, that particular protected area. Okay, understood. I did say in the beginning that, for example, Protected Areas Commission, we don't focus on it unless something happens and it, you know, it's in the news for a little while and then that is it, you know, um, it dies down. 
why should I, especially if I don't live or function anywhere near any of the protected areas that you've named thus far, why should I care about protected areas and what happens? Well, let's say you get up early in the morning mm -hmm. and you step outside your door mm -hmm. and you inhale a breath of clean, fresh, crisp air. Mm -hmm. The protected areas in Guyana help to ensure that the air that you are breathing or the water that you are drinking remains to the quality that we need it to be for mm -hmm. now, for 20 years down the line, 40, 60 years down the line, mm -hmm. right? We have the, the five protected areas in Guyana. You have the Shell Beach protected area, yeah. Kaitra National Park, Iwakrama Rainforest Reserve, the Kanuku Mountains, and Konashen Community Owned um, Conservation Area. Now, citizens in Georgetown might not necessarily ever directly yeah. benefit from mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to travel to Kaitra National Park, right? The fact that Kaitra National Park is a protected area and you as a tourist from Georgetown want to go and see Kaitra Falls. If it wasn't a protected area, suppose the water was, you know, brown and muddy and sludgy mm -hmm. due to, you know, some... Uh, activity going on upstream yeah. that directly actually that 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 impacts you because mm -hmm. you as a tourist that you don't want to go and see that so the mere fact that you have these areas are protect the um, protected areas it helps to not only maintain the resources that are there in you know I wouldn't say a, a pristine state but an intact state one that will benefit anyone that has the ability to use those resources use it, okay Right, so it's it's all our business. Okay, yes, well, I, I, I trust that uh, those of you who are home, um, after today you'll take some more interest in what happens with uh, the Protected Areas Commission. I'm happy that you touched on tourists. If um, uh, me or anybody else is a tourist who wants to go and so on. In just touching on that, how um, does the PAC play a major role in promoting tourism as, as it relates to the protected areas? Well, each of our protected areas is carefully managed in such a way that, uh, first, let me, let, me, let me back up a bit. Okay. All of the protected areas in Guyana, they're what we call IUCN category six protected areas. It means that the resources contained in those protected areas, we're able to sustainably use them, right? Mm. So the local communities who uh, rely on these protected areas, who traditionally hunt or farm or fish in them, Mm -hmm. can actually still use those okay. resources, right? Now, as a tourism body, we work carefully with the Tourism and Hospitality Association of Guyana, GTA, as well as private tour operators and so on. Mm -hmm. If we maintain the resources that are in there, the biodiversity, the birds, the plants, the fishes, right, as well as the intrinsic natural beauty, the, the sheer magnificence of Skytour Falls, or, you know, being able to walk out onto the Rupununun Savannah and look up at the Kanuku Mountains, okay. right? If we maintain those resources, then they're there for, you know, 80 years into the future. And that benefits the tourism sector as well, because mm -hmm. you're bringing people from all around the world, people who have heard about the magnificence of Kaitra Falls, and they just yeah. want a, a peek at that, right? That's what we do. We maintain those areas so that people from all around the world, as well as Guyanese, can actually benefit from these areas. All right. And uh, uh, of course, uh, viewers will take a, a, a break in, in a moment or two. Before we take that break to uh, uh, view the, 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 the footage um, like to tell us exactly and show us exactly what are protected areas, you mentioned that some of the maybe residents or citizens living close by to these protected areas can still go and utilize those resources. Mm -hmm. Of course, in a, a, a way that wouldn't harm the protected area. Do the, Would they usually have to seek formal permission? Is there a, a process? Oh, no, no, no. So most of the communities that surround these areas that have traditionally used this land, they're stewards of the land, and they've okay. been fantastic stewards thus far, right? I mean, they use what they need to survive. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they don't need to seek permission from us, okay. right? They have traditionally used their land, and they'll continue to traditionally use this land. The only reason we're there is to sort of ensure that the resources are there for another 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, so that you don't use out all the fish or you don't use out all the, the agoutis. And we've been working with um, many of the communities. We've recently done what we call a CAP survey, 
right, which is knowledge, attitudes, and practices in the Kanuku Mountains area. So we've touched 21 communities wow. in the Kanuku Mountains area, people who directly benef- um, use the resources in the protected area. And it's just to give us a baseline or an idea of how people use resources, what mm-hmm. they've used these resources for traditionally, mm-hmm. and how we can work along with the communities to ensure that the resources are used sustainably. And I assume that would put you in a better position, meaning the PAC in a better position, um, to manage, exactly. to better manage. Exactly. Do you find that the communities have been receptive to your work? For the most part, yes, because, I mean, they recognize the fact that they need to have these resources for future generations, not mm-hmm. only for now, but um, any assistance that can be provided to help manage the resources, it's always welcome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, viewers, what we'll do, we'll uh, take, well, it's not really a break. We're going to show you what exactly what are Guyana's protected areas, and don't forget, it is actually voiced by someone who has been really championing green Guyana and urging us to protect nature, protect our natural resources, and of course, that's His Excellency, the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Brigadier David Granger. So take a look at our protected areas, and we'll come right back with you. My concept of, of the protected areas ties into the administration of the country as well as our biodiversity. As part of the mainland, we have a very complex landscape. You know, the, the coastal zone, the, the lakes, the wetlands, the highlands, the rivers, the waterfalls. When you consider the complexity, and in fact, each area has a different type of of biodiversity. I'm convinced that every region could have a unique protected area. The Kaichu Falls, the Victoria Ridge Lily, these are things we own. I'm proud of them, I boast about them, I put them here. It's it's the largest lily in the world. How do you like that? I think that we are now waking up to the treasure, the prize of our biodiversity. And by combining this rich resource with our protected areas, it will become um, a, a value which permeates society. And every region, every Guyanese citizen can say, this represents me, this represents my patrimony, this represents something that I want to hand over to my children and grandchildren. I think this is a place to love, that you could sit at the bank of the Ensecriba River on Atibio Krama and see that river flowing. You can see the Cayman coming up there for morning um, breakfast. And it's love. It's love. (laughs) And that is what is going to keep this country going. Of staying with us here on Conversations in State, of course, what you were looking at, a very brief feature there on Guyana's protected areas. And again, as I said before, it was voiced by His Excellency. For those who are now joining, today our conversation focuses on the Protected Areas Commission. And uh, today's representative of the Protected Areas Commission is Miss Annalise Bini. Annalise, let's talk now about... Um, 
you were saying that there is a very new protected area. What is the newest protected Actually, area? Yes, um, we're very, very happy. Um, mm -hmm. The Connishan Community Owned Conservation Area actually became a legal protected area a few weeks ago mm -hmm. only and uh, it's the largest protected area in the system and it adds maybe about one and a half million acres under protection under legal protection mm -hmm. so the entire system comprises of about just over four million acres under legal protection and that that works out to about uh, eight eight and a half percent of Guyana's surface area and um, what makes this protected area unique is that it's actually a community managed protected area, right? It's the first community mm -hmm. managed or community owned protected area that is part of the system. And um, it's an incredible opportunity for us because I, you may remember the president actually um, proposed that we add another 2 million acres of land, again, a surface area under um, protected areas management and this with the inclusion of the Connishan community owned conservation area mm. we're actually adding just about a million and a half acres mm -hmm. to the national protected area system just to clear up any possible confusion when you say it's managed by the community of itself mm -hmm. was the proposal to have it be a protected area that it Yes, it actually came from the community. So there are okay. different categories of protected areas. So you have like mm -hmm. national protected areas like um, uh, Shell Beach protected area, uh, um, Kanuku Mountains protected areas. You also have community or Amerindian protected areas whereby you can have an actual Amerindian village deciding to put forward a proposal to the protected areas commission to join the national um protected area system okay. right and they have decided that the land their land right is so important to them that they want to ensure that the resources that are there are actually going to be sustainably managed for future okay. generations so they proposed it to the um, protected area mm -hmm. system and actually we were able to um with of course with the uh, the help of the government to actually merge it into the protected area system the national protected area system so if there are other maybe persons looking now and there there may be um, we may not know because Guyana is <laughs> physically we're very large um if persons want to have a part of their community in in general this is across the board if they want to have a part of their their community become a protected area can they uh, simply approach yes they can actually come in us mm -hmm. um because there that you need to fulfill in order to be a protected area first of all i mean you're thinking large areas of land um but they're like private protected areas. You have a large swath of land and you're interested in protecting a part of it for whatever reason or the other, it may be that it has a unique species or it is an area of outstanding natural beauty. You can come in and chat with us and we'll go through the process with you to determine whether or not it can or it cannot can or can. be included in the system. All right. Um, and apart from what you mentioned, have you had approaches? All right. Let's then we have become a country that is big on green, protecting the environment mm -hmm. and safeguarding and so on. How has, this, apart from the protected areas, how has the PAC contributed to Guyana going green? Well, we also have, uh, the PAC is one of the first buildings that's completely run on solar power in Georgetown. And where is it uh, for the, located in the National Park? And mm -hmm. if you call park and you on, on, on the Thomas Lands entrance and you see on the right hand side of the, um, the park, there's a green and white building and it's completely covered in solar panels at the top. So we get all of our power from solar and when we don't use it in the um, on the weekends, it feeds back into the grid. So when JPL decides to surprise us, <laughs> you're still running? <laughs> We're still up and running, okay. which is very productive for the PAC. Right. But um, we also, in addition to the hinterland protected areas, we also manage urban green spaces. So you have the botanical gardens, the Mm -hmm. uh, National Park, the Zoological Park, and Jovira Park. All of that also comes under the purview of the protected areas. And I mean, these spaces together, when you pull them apart, they're the largest green space in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And people need green spaces. We have about maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred people who use the park every day for recreation, right. for um, exercise. exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, it 
it adds to the general well-being of human right people need need those you to